the, the question starts with a bit of a context. It says, there's an eerie sense of more compliance ahead, mostly hurting good providers in terms of Disability Rights Act, the N uh, National Disability Commission, and more to come. Who invests margin? In, so I'll repeat the question. There's an eerie sense of more compliance ahead, mostly hurting good providers who invests who invest margins in safety, staff development, etc. What's the way forward from here? Step up. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the way forward from here? We do need to train our staff in terms of disability rights. And I mean, we need to also apply the United Nations Convention on the Rights of People with Disability into every aspect of our service delivery as well. I feel that our Disability Discrimination Act is not strong enough. It needs to be strengthened. It needs to be strengthened against the Social Security Act, against the Immigration Act, because currently some of those Commonwealth Acts discriminate against people with disability. So I think we've got a long way to go and it's not impossible to bring about those changes. It is possible. We just need to be more vigilant. We've got, you know, a long way in front of us to go yet. I mean, with NDIS, it's been a game changer. It has improved the lives of many of us, although it's still in its infancy. It's, you know, NDIA needs to learn from us. We need to learn from uh, NDIS, the, the scheme, but it's a step forward. And, and I feel that, you know, working with people with diverse disabilities from diverse cultural backgrounds, may they be, may they be people with hearing impairment, you know, deaf people, blind people, <laughs> culturally diverse people, their needs are different. And only when we have the right supports to meet individual needs, then we can have an inclusive society where we can be part of the community life in every aspect in terms of education, health, housing, public transport, as, as I was saying before, Centrelink. I mean, yes, NDIS is helping us, supporting us, but state services rely too much on NDIS and have sort of lagged behind in providing the services, the, the appropriate, appropriate services for us. That needs to come forward as well. You know, education is the key for everything, inclusive education. At the moment, when you go to a um, hospital to talk to your um, doctor with an interpreter, Either the interpreter doesn't know the disability terms, terminology, or the doctor doesn't understand it. So we need to have disability awareness sort of included in the training of health professionals, teacher, teacher training, you know, social workers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think that would be the way forward if we want to have a fully inclusive society. Thank you. Thank you, Nihal.